So we're heading down to the Hawkesbury for a pre-fish and uh, we're basically going to focus um, mainly on natural rock walls. Love fishing down here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to, um, for the first half an hour or so, we're just going to be cruising around and checking out what's, go what's going on because I haven't been in it for a while. So um, that's what I'm basically doing a pre-fish is make sure I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the forage and I'm looking at the bottom and that'll give me an indication of what to throw first up. So we've got a great tide, a little run out tide. So check a few mangrove edges as well and we'll see how we go. Hey guys, I'm basically I'm examining the area. I'm just listening in on all the bits, bits and pieces. But I can hear right up on top of the hills at the moment. There's a lot of cicadas, but they're not at the bank yet. So until they, they move on down and hit the edge, I'm not even going to worry about throwing a surface lure. So I think straight away, okay, I'll, I've got to throw a hard body up against all this natural sort of rock. The best thing about a hard body is you can run it through. The bib can get caught up on a rock. A lot of people tend to think that's the hook getting caught up, but it's actually not a hook. It's the bib getting caught on a rock and you think, okay, I'm snagged. But all you have to do is just back off, it'll float back up, and you back over the top. If it does get hooked on the snag, there's a little trick to getting it off. However, in some cases, you don't really want to get it off. You want to leave it on there as long as you can and make that lure rattle as much as you can. It gets a lot of attention from fish. That's a little trick I can show you after. So what, I'm, uh, what I've done already, I've already scouted the area. I've checked the... the um, the zone where I'm going to be throwing the lure in and um, I'm thinking okay clear water so I'm going to go a fairly translucent colour fairly clear and um, it's fairly high still so I can I can fish a, a deeper diving hard body so I'm going to be going colours like the mongrel which is this colour here in the deep and the shallow okay so those two lures they're perfect for exactly what we're trying to target today. Um, and I'll probably end up going, because I saw a fair bit of uh, darker sort of maroney rock underneath. So I'll probably get the mutt, if that's the case. So the mutt also in, in deep. And in shallow as well. And I'll just focus most of my attention there. You see it's got a little bit of orange on it the belly, so that's perfect. You can probably replicate like a yabby or something. So, um, sort of got settled into the spot now. And you've got to remember it's a pre-fish, so it's not torn in the situation. I'm not going crazy and casting like an idiot. It's going to take my time, get settled in the spot, get my bearings in on the area, and try and catch a few fish. Really important with these 3B, especially the deeper diving one, keep in touch with the bottom as, as long as you can. As long as that bib's hitting the bottom and stirring up a bit of mud and smacking its bib into rocks, when you get the brim's attention. It's no good having it, especially with the shallow diver at the moment. We've got a good stage of the tide, it's still up about halfway, so I won't be throwing the shallow diver until the tide's nearly completely out. The, um, the beauty of these lures is they, they dive about one and a half metres, so I'm sitting in about one and a half metres here. I'm casting into half a metre. So I can roll them out really slowly and keep them in touch with the bottom completely. Very important to have your cast very accurately. Within a metre from the shoreline, it would be sufficient enough for what we're doing. There's another one. And yeah, a little fellow, this one. Dropped him. Yeah, that was within the first three or four winds. So you can, you can see how tight they are up against structure. A lot of people get... Um scared about throwing lures into structure that don't be. It's specifically designed. Timber's a hard thing, but when it comes to rock, you'll be cruising along. The first thing to hit, of course, because it's in that direction like that, is it'll hit a rock. So the first initial feeling you've got from here, oh, I'm snagged. It's not really snagged. 
these trebles are still floating, suspending in, in the water. All you've got to do is back that off, come with this full, full, complete slack, it'll just back off off the snag and get straight back into it. And generally, if you've hit a rock in this direction here, there's a brim waiting here anyway. So just give it a good couple of raises. You can hear that. I can, you can hear that, that uh, rattle. It's, it's fairly significant. And they'll hear that from a good radius of maybe three metres. And they'll come around and have a look and they'll be scouting the, the vibration of the water because it's so dirty here. So that's, um, don't ever get scared about throwing it in a structure because like I said, the first point that's ever going to get hooked is your bib. It's not actually hooks. It's a different story with timber, of course, when you're running it over timber. Timber's a lot more um, sticky. So they get, the hooks get hooked up a lot easier on, on, a tim, on a piece of timber rather than a, a rock. So just keep that in mind every time you're going hard body fishing. Hey, dummy. No, he's under the rock. Oh. Look at him on that rock, man. He's only little. Oh. Got him out. Oh. Man, what a spirited little fighter. Oh. Probably about 27 for now. He just went eight. I like you on that one. Oh, man. Oh. She's got some go. He's only like a 28 or 29. No, he's probably a 30. Man. <laughs> I mean, I'd go pretty hard too if I was caught the side of the face with a hook. Not that big, but we got it all on camera. <laughs> That's what you call sight casting. <laughs> <laughs>